August 28, 1963, 250,000 Americans marched on Washington to demand that the president address civil rights, voting rights, and poverty. 57 years later, we have no president, and we have no administration worth making demands to. Instead, we have a man who would be king. Over the last four days, America and the world have been given the gift of warning. We have been warned, viscerally and visually, what it would look like if America fell into dictatorship. What we saw this week was not a political convention, but rather an attempted four-day coronation. Now, many countries have fallen into autocracy without seeing the left hook coming. But our dictator in training has been warming up for four years. And this week, he finally got his dream to be treated like royalty by an adoring, maskless crowd willing to pretend for his pleasure and at the risk of their lives that there is no pandemic. By the sycophants in his supine political party and by the Mark Burnett apprentice team who was willing to produce it all up, Kim Jong-un style. And last night, well, last night was the big reveal. The White House was remade into Trump Palace, the domain of Trump, his reluctant birther queen, and his princess, the royal public charge and her globe-trotting, do-nothing-yet-also-do-everything husband. While Trump's court jesters made Fort Henry and the King David Hotel in Jerusalem into just another set of grubby Trump properties, hopefully not soon to go into bankruptcy or break out in bedbugs. All that was left was to slap the tacky Trump brand name on every one of those buildings to match the iron gate strung up around the White House. But here's the thing, Donald. And I call you Donald because in four long years, you have expressed zero interest in actually being our president. Dude, that is not your house. Those are not your properties. And you and your brood are no royal family. To paraphrase the, li to paraphrase the line from The Lord of the Rings, America has no king. America needs no king, and the majority of us will fight your attempted takeover, your drive to take away our health care, and your failure to contain the pandemic, which has made us sicker and poorer and pitied by the world. You're bowing down to Russia, which has made us weaker. Your caging of children and your barring of Muslims and refugees and your exploitation of immigrants, which has shamed us. Your racism and the white nationalist extremists and gunslinging vigilantes that you and your party have unleashed on us. We will fight you to the bitter end. Showing off a few black friends won't save you from what everybody knows you are. So word of advice, Donald the Cruel, would be first of your name. Don't start measuring the drapes for your dynasty. We're gonna want our White House back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.